just think it's a bunch of BS, man. Yeah. I, I really do. Mike McCarthy, I, okay, he doesn't deserve this damn comment. No coach does. See, that's what's going on with all these podcast boys out here in the locker room. Because at the end of the day, it was about we. We didn't do enough. All of y'all got your asses kicked. If you would have worked half as freaking hard as a damn coach does, maybe you'd be able to play every damn game. They have no choice but to tear it down. This is what's starting. The finger pointing. Oh. Yeah. And it makes me think, man, how, how much is Dak patched together so much of the issues because of the way that his leadership. They want to, you know, spout and say all this type of stuff. There used to be a time when there was a little bit of respect, a little, a little decorum in the locker room. And right now they could change his name to either Mika Parsons, because it's all about him, or Ika Parsons, because it's all about me and I. And it has nothing whatsoever to do with everybody else on that team. And it doesn't make a damn bit of difference how talented you are. You don't win with guys like that. How about him, Cowboy? Angry Cowboy, stand on your town the line. What's going on, Cowboys Nation and angry Cowboys fans around the world? Y'all know who it is. It's your man, the angry Cowboys fan. And the Dallas Cowboys continue to unravel in front of our very eyes. After the game last night, Sports Junkie and myself stayed on to talk to Cowboys Nation during the post-game wrap-up. Little did we know what was going on during the post-game interviews with the Dallas Cowboys players. Little did we know about what Micah Parsons had to say about the Dallas Cowboys head coach, Mike McCarthy. I'd be remiss if I didn't play what Micah Parsons had to say about Mike McCarthy. So let's take a listen to that real quick. You know, Mike can leave and go wherever he wants, but the guys, I, you know, I kind of feel bad for his guys like Zach Martin and guys who might be on their last year on their way out, you know, because that's who I wanted to hold the trophy for. You know, you want to win games and do great things with those type of legends who put in more time and work than Mike McCarthy ever did. So those are the kind of guys that I have so much sympathy and hurt for. On this morning's episode of Get Up, Mike Greenberg, Damian Woody, Dan Orlowski, and Rex Ryan discussed a statement that Micah Parsons made on Mike McCarthy. And judging from the intro, they didn't like what they heard very well. So we're going to take a listen to the three clips that I got for y'all, and y'all know what we're going to do. We're going to come back and unpack this raw and uncut. So, Angry Cowboys fans, Let's take a listen to what Damian Woody had to say. Greeny, I've never heard anyone say anything remotely like that after a game. I, re I really have. And, like, who the hell Michael Parsons think he is talking like that after a game? Bro, you've been missing all these games with the, with the injury. And last time I checked, the head coach is a Super Bowl winning, winning coach. And I know the season hasn't gone the way that everyone is expected to, to go and all that, but for you to sit there in the locker room right after you, your team gets pummeled and to just undress your head coach in, in that manner? Cowboys Nation, I know I call out the three and four letter networks when they have to talk trash about our Dallas Cowboys, but... There's sometimes that I got to actually agree with him. I agree with the disgust that Damian Woody displayed on today's show. In what world does it make it okay for a player to get on national television and send shots across the bow at their head coach? In what organization do you get to publicly call out your boss like that? Knowing what this man has had to work with coming into the season, knowing that your front office did nothing to remedy the situation when it came to acquiring talent knowing you missed almost half the damn season and you throw Mike McCarthy under the bus like that Micah damn but jumping into the next clip Dan Orlovsky mentioned something that really resonated with me Cowboys Nation so let's take a listen to what he had to say and then come back and talk about it roll a clip the finger pointing oh. yeah and, and the finger pointing and it makes me think man how, how much is Dak 
patch together so much of the issues because of the way that his leadership, this, this is a problem right now in Dallas. This is, a, this is becoming a everybody looking out for me. I played on 0-16. We didn't get to that. We didn't get to that where we were bashing coaches and each other in the media. I played on 2-14. and 14. We didn't get to that. Okay, so Micah had the opportunity to step forward as a leader of an organization that everybody clearly knows talent-wise isn't where it needs to be. He's got a problem. Yeah, I mean, his look, best he's, player that, did that. This is what I thought last year, Cowboys Nation, and this is what I continue to think. I believe Dak Prescott has been the glue holding this severed organization together. It hasn't been your owner keeping us competitive. It hasn't been the innovative play calling from Mike McCarthy that's been keeping us in the chase. It's been the play of your quarterback and what weapons he has had at his disposal. We'll get into that more during my raw and uncut portion. So make sure you stick around for that. Now going into the last clip, Damian Woody talks about the word that this organization seems to be allergic to, and that's accountability. So let's take a listen to the clip so we can come back and unpack this raw and uncut. So, Cowboys Nation, let's go ahead and take and listen to the last clip from Damian Woody. The players in the locker room has to, has to, has to demand some accountability, what's going on inside the locker room. Because I can tell you right now, that BS that Michael Parsons just pulled, if, you, if you're any player in that locker room that gives a damn about culture, anything in, the, in this league, you don't let that stuff ride. Like, we're going to have a conversation. I don't give a damn who you are in that. I don't give a damn if you're Michael Parsons or not. We're going to have a conversation because you can't just have that going on in the locker room. It will, it will literally tear the locker room apart. All right, Cowboys Nation, let's go ahead and get this party started. Y'all ready for my raw and uncut? Y'all ready? Let's get it. In no way, shape, or form should a player be sending shots to the head coach during a press conference. In no way should a player be questioning their head coach's ability and their desire for the team in a public forum such as that. This is the problem showing everybody why the Dallas Cowboys are the Dallas Cowboys. This is showing everybody why we haven't gotten over the hump in the last 30 years. Why a player is automatically a star when they come to the Dallas Cowboys. Why the culture of this organization is so screwed up and has been screwed up for decades. What type of permission does a player have from the ownership to speak about their head coach like that is beyond me, Cowboys Nation. I have seen numerous Dallas Cowboys fans wish that Jerry Jones would just step out of the spotlight. I don't want him replaced by Micah Parsons. This is one of those situations that should have been handled in the confines of the organization. This should have been spoken about in-house, Cowboys Nation. Why is it that people expect to be confronted like men, but not return the same level of respect? Micah Parsons was so angry at Malik Hooker for going on the All Facts No Breaks podcast for speaking his truth, talking about you can come to me because you're my locker mate. You could have came to Mike McCarthy about this, Micah. You didn't have to make this another public spectacle to add to the Dallas Cowboys soap opera image. That's not what a leader does, Micah. And I know some Dak Prescott haters are going to hate this part, but something that Dan Orlovsky said resonated with me, Cowboys Nation. With everything going on, it makes him wonder if Dak Prescott was the glue holding all the dysfunction at bay. Now, with Dak Prescott injured and not able to bear all that load on his shoulders, things are starting to fall apart. It's got me asking myself if some fans are misplacing their rage at the most noticeable person on the team because that's who you're told to blame. We're told to blame the quarterback and the coach with statements like we'll only go as far as Dak takes us or Dak's going to have to do more with less. We are shown who to blame when things don't go according to plan. Those fans who dislike Dak, they'll point out every single thing that he does that's less than perfect, but not hold the others in the organization to a same account or the same standard. How many times have I read give Cooper Rush or Trey Lance a chance yesterday? Well, we gave him a chance. What happened? The only other person that gets held to that DAC standard is Mike McCarthy. The two people Cowboys Nation is dead set on blaming. What if it's been your quarterback that's been holding this team together all along? 
What if it's been Dak Prescott and his leadership that has been getting these guys to rally around him? Now with Dak Prescott gone and the season looking bleak, it's all coming unraveled, Cowboys Nation. Mike's play calling is on full display. The lack of talent that was acquired by Jerry and Stephen Jones and their staff is on full display. The lack of discipline and decorum within the locker room and the players is on full display. What if it's been your quarterback and his attempts at lifting this team that's kept this team competitive? You cannot tell me for a second that when Dak Prescott is cooking and on point, that the rest of the team isn't doing the same thing. Prime example, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff game. If Dak Prescott plays his best, C.D. Lamb and the receivers get their yards. The pass opens up the rush. His play makes the O-line's job easier. What happens when the plan is inefficient? What happens when the play calling is inefficient? It makes the ones trying to execute the plan have to work a little bit harder. You work harder, you become more susceptible to injury. Dak Prescott has been one of the best contributors in masking the Dallas Cowboys' inefficiencies with their play. C.D. Lamb, another. Tyler Smith, Zach Martin, Micah Parsons, and so on. You can only do so much until your efforts have no impact. You can do whatever you want to to a car that's missing a battery. You can replace the brakes. You can replace the tires, the transmission, the rotor, the ignition switch. If you don't replace or recharge the battery, you are going nowhere. No matter how spectacular you are at your job, that car ain't moving, is it, Cowboys Nation? Have you ever been at a job and not able to finish your job or complete the task due to things beyond your control? You put everything that you got into that job, but it still won't work or can't be completed for things that are above your pay grade. You're one of the best at what you do, but you can't complete the task because you need help from the higher ups. What do you do as the lower rung on the ladder in the grand scheme of an organization, Cowboys Nation? Do you have a meeting or do you go public? Do you talk as an organization or do you out the ones you think is the problem? What Micah Parsons did was foolish, and it shows me that the decorum in the NFL has been lost in the Dallas Cowboys locker room or some of the players in it. What Micah did, I wouldn't advise in any relationship you have, whether it's your job or a partnership or a marriage or a serious relationship. You don't air out your grievances and all of your business out on Front Street. You approach the person and you have a conversation with them. You pull that person to the side and you build with them. You don't tear them down, especially in a public setting where you're already failing in the eyes of public perception. The court of public opinion has already convicted Mike McCarthy and his sentence will be handed down this coming off season. And you know, some people are going to say that Micah Parsons spoke the truth, that Micah Parsons stood on business and kept it a buck with us. I'm sorry, but I would have to disagree with you on that because we all can see what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys. We all can sit here and witness that there's an issue when it comes to the entire organization. Dak Prescott's absence has only magnified the situation. One of the only safeguards to mediocrity continues to be told that he's mediocre and Cowboys Nation will continue to witness the slow descent into dysfunction instead of realizing Who's truly at fault? But this has been your man, the Angry Cowboys fan. What did y'all think about what the crew of Get Up had to say? What did you feel about what Micah Parsons had to say while airing out the frustrations on Mike McCarthy? Y'all know what we doing. Let's go ahead and talk about it in the comment section. If you're digging the content and want to help get it out to even more Dallas Cowboys fans... Drop a like on this video and share it with whomever you know is a Cowboys fan. If you are DC for life and you're just shaking your damn head at the negative press this team continues to put itself in, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to be notified whenever I go live, release a video, podcast episode, or Madden 25 and College Football 25 gameplay. Never tell your business or what's on your mind, Cowboys Nation. There's always going to be somebody out there that's waiting to use what you say against you. We've witnessed this since two years ago with the training camp situation between Trayvon Diggs and Dak Prescott, where Trayvon Diggs told Dak Prescott to shut his bitch ass up. We witnessed it with Malik Hooker. We witnessed it with CeeDee Lamb getting his lips read on television. Same thing with Dak Prescott. Everyone is watching how much they're in your business. 
That's up to the Dallas Cowboys organization. And as far as Micah Parsons, some say that the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Not all the time, Cowboys Nation. Sometimes the squeaky wheel gets replaced. This has been your man, the Angry Cowboys fan, and I'm out. Cowboys fan, you done made it through the entire video. But if you want more content, you can definitely go to this video right here. Or if you want the latest episode of the Angry Cowboys Fan Podcast, you can go right here. But whatever you do, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. But remain DC for life.